Yo what's up guys Tanmay for simple snippets and welcome back to a new video tutorial on core java programming and today's topic is going to be part 2 of exception handling in java programming so in the previous video we just took a introductory lesson on what is exception handling and it was all theory so what i'll do is i'll link that video in the video description so if you have missed that video and if you don't know what exception handling in java is you can just quickly go through that video it's a very short video wherein we just discuss the theory and what is the basic working and what exactly exception handling is in java so go ahead and check that video if you haven't yet checked it out you can also see a card on the top right corner and today's topic is going to be the part 2 of that video so basically we are going to deal into the programming part and more importantly we are going to look into the try catch and finally keyword which assist us in performing exception handling in java programming so this is a theoretical article again on try catch and finally block and what i'll do is i'll drop the link of this article in the video description so this is our official website that is simplesnippets.tech and we are not going to go into a lot of detail in the theory part we are directly going to jump into the programming part as i promised in the previous video so the five keywords used in java exception handling are try catch finally throw and throws so we are going to be looking into the three keywords in this video and then probably throw and throws we'll cover in next video tutorial So I'll jump into the Adbeans ID, and what you can do is you can probably pause the video. You can also go through this article, just if you want a theoretical information about try catch finally through and throughs. But yeah, let's jump to the Adbeans ID and directly start off with how to perform exception handling. So in the previous video, we discussed why we need exception handling and what are runtime errors that can happen in our program, which would make the program unresponsive or it would exit the program abruptly without giving any notice. so that situation is something that we want to avoid those are the exceptions so in our static void main let's try to create two integers i'll say int x comma y i would say x is equal to 50 and y is equal to 0 now i'm going to say int z or z depending upon where you're living is equal to x divided by y now if you notice x is 50 right and y is 0 so 50 divided by 0 so any number divided by 0 is not defined or infinity right so this is indefinite correct so this is supposed to give an exception because the program doesn't know what exactly output should we give and what should be stored in z okay so if i try to run this you'll see that i have got i have got an exception you can see in the red exception in thread main and it's divided by 0 so it's an arithmetic exception and the actual description is divided by 0 exception you can also see that it's at line number 10 and everything all the details and build failed so let's say if i had another statement over here i'll say system dot out dot print ln a random statement okay and also you can see that i have a lot of code below this so you can see that there are a lot of lines of code after this statement that is at line number 10 okay so let me just so here i'll say many other statements and program lines okay my friend try to save this and if i again try to run this and i am not handling the exception right now if i run this you can see again i got an exception and you can see that this system dot out dot print ln line did not even execute so the exception came at line number 10 and that's where our program directly exited so it just stopped working so this is when we do not handle any exception so since i have not use the try catch block over here the program directly exits now let's try to apply exception handling so what exception handling will help us do is even if there is this error that is this exception that is happening in the program the program execution won't get affected so the try keyword is used and the try block basically it has it is a block because it has opening and closing curly braces so the try block is used when you think that the code the lines of code might generate an exception so anything that you feel can generate an exception let's say you are connecting to a database so those connecting statements there are like three four statements which would perform that connection if you think that there might be an error or there might be an exception in that case you have to put that in try catch block okay now if you see i'm still getting an error because it's saying try without catch comma finally so when you declare a try block you have to declare a catch or finally block so either of the two but you cannot omit both okay so you can have try and finally and you can also have try and catch 
or you can have all three that is try catch and finally but you have to have something with try okay so now i have declared the try catch so i think that the exception might occur at this line and then i am seeing catch and then opening and closing round brackets and in that i am thinking that okay since it is a mathematical calculation over here this exception is more likely to be an arithmetic exception than to be a sql exception or any other exception right so that's why i'll say arithmetic exception then i'll say ex and then again opening and closing brackets of the catch block and then i'll simply print out the message over here exception is and then i'll just say ex okay i'll just append it and this is an object right so whenever an exception occurs an object is being thrown right so that's how exception handling works and that's what we saw in the previous video when we were discussing the theory so this is an object and it would have some message over here it would have some data so let's see what that data is so if i try to run this now so there you go you can see exception is java dot lang dot arithmetic exception which is divided by zero and now you can see that the random statement was also printed which means that the try was executed because we got an exception the exception was caught in the catch block so that's how it works any exception that happens in the try goes to the catch block if we have implemented the catch block and then it gets printed because i am printing it i could have just left it blank and then there would have been no message so if i just do it like this you can see and then after that the normal execution also continues so this statement that is the random statement printing was also happening over here okay and you can see build successful also so a program did not exit in between right so that's the benefit okay now let's understand what a finally block is so when you say finally this block is sort of like a compulsory execution block so when you declare this finally block any code inside this will always execute okay so even if you get an exception or you don't get an exception the finally block will always execute so it is usually typed in to perform cleanup activities so let's say if you are connecting to a database and you get an exception or you don't get an exception basically when you want to disconnect from the database you write that code in finally because you know that the finally block is always going to be executed or any other example would be if you have opened up a file if you are accessing any file and then you are performing some input output into that file and then you want to close that file so the closing code would go in the finally block okay because you know that the finally block is going to be executed and the file will be closed properly otherwise you might corrupt that file right if it's left open or if there is some random entries into that file so let me just put a statement inside this so i'll say finally block okay i'll just save this and if i run this there you go you can see finally block was always executed the exception happened but we, since we are not printing anything in the catch that's why the output is not showing and then the random statement which is over here which is below the finally block is being executed and any code below that will also be continued because our program won't close in between so as i mentioned you can have try and finally also so if i don't have a catch block it's totally fine it it will not create any error but now you can see that we do not have anything to handle the exception so in the try this exception will happen and then the exception object will be created right the arithmetic exception but since we do not have a catch block it will still give us an error so if i try to run this there you go you can see it we got an exception but you can see that the finally block was executed so this is what i was telling that finally will always be executed now you can see that the random statement is not executed because our program stopped stopped over here only but since we had a finally block the program executed the finally block one last time okay similarly if you don't want finally if you if you are sure that the finally block is not going to be needed if you are not going to be doing any cleanup activities which is absolutely important you can omit the finally block and you can only have try catch so usually in most cases we only use try and catch but sometimes the finally block is required so even this will work there you go you can see random statement was printed and we handle the exception so yeah this was the basic use case of try catch and finally block now you can have multiple try catch blocks in a program and you can also have them nested so inside this try if i have any further code over here i can add one more try over here okay and then i can also have a catch inside that because try has to follow with a catch block you cannot have in between code so you cannot have some code over here okay i cannot say int x equals to 5 and then i say exception e so this is not possible okay you always have to follow try with catch 
I mean the catch block always has to be followed after writing the try. So this is okay. So you can see we have a try block inside that we again have a try block and a catch block for that try block. It gets a little tricky and crowded over here but you get the point right. We can have nested try multiple try catches. Similarly we can also have multiple catch blocks for a single try block. So you can see I have a try block over here and now I'm catching arithmetic exception. But what if you have a lot of code in the try block. And what if you are saying there might be some other kind of exception also. Let's say you are performing database connection and you might get a database exception that is SQL exception. Or you are performing array operations and you might get an array index out of bounds exception. So you are not sure right. So in that case what you can do is you can perform one more catch block for the same try block and you can say array index out of bound exception ex and handle that okay. Or what you can do is a simpler way to go about this is since you're not sure what kind of exception might occur, you can have only one single catch and for the class of this ex that is that exception that is being generated instead of being very specific, you can become a generalized exception. So you can say exception. So this exception is the parent class of all the different types of exceptions, right? We saw that in the previous video, the class hierarchy of exceptions. So whatever be the exception being generated over here, it will be caught in this ex because it's a generalized exception, which is a parent class. So all arithmetic exceptions, SQL exception, file not found, class not found, all of those exceptions will be caught in one single catch. Okay. So this is a simple approach, but you can also have multiple catch as I showed. So yeah, this was all about try catch block and the practical aspect of try catch and finally, and how to go about using them in your code. And there are certain important points to remember. So I have them in the theory. Let me just zoom in. So you can read this entire article. There is a lot of information and you can see the visual diagram also. And some things that I wanted to share are if you don't handle exception before terminating the program, JVM exe executes the finally block if any. So we saw that finally block was executed all the time. So this third point is important at a time only one exception is occurred and at a time only one catch block is executed. So it happens one at a time. And this last point is again very important. So all catch blocks must be ordered from most specific to most general. That is catch for arithmetic exception must come before catch for exception. Now let's take that again example. So now you can see I am catching exception class object over here. So after this I cannot have one more catch to say arithmetic exception ex. Okay. I cannot have this order. You can see I am getting an error because this catch will always catch any kind of exception, right? And this catch will only capture arithmetic exception. So this has to be placed above the simple exception. Okay. Now this is allowed, but if I put this above arithmetic exception, then I'm getting an error. So this is what that point says. All catch blocks must be ordered from most specific. So arithmetic exception is more specific, right? We are targeting only one kind of exception and this only exception is generic, right? It's, it's at a higher level from arithmetic exception because it can capture any of the exception. So more specific has to be ordered on top and after that you can have exception. So this is what that point states. And yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the concept of how to use try catch and finally block in terms of practical code and you can read out this article. Let me know how this article was, how this video was. If you understood this, give, give it a thumbs up guys. Let me know in the comments how this video was. And if you haven't yet subscribed guys, make sure you subscribe because I upload frequently on this channel, a lot of information technology oriented video tutorials and you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial. So thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.